Tiny was outside my mosquito nest last night. Do you want to take a look? Hey, dearly for our mistakes out here. To what extent do you think King John was a tyrant? Excuse me. King John. King John. To what? John. Yeah. John with the ears. With the ears. Yeah. He, well, he, I think he had his. Yeah, to what extent was King John a tyrant? A what? A tyrant. A tyrant. A tyrant. Rupert and I have rented bikes for the day. We're going to go to a national park. He's just taking a photo of some kids. Rupert's, Rupert's going to demonstrate a firecracker that he had the pleasure of firing before in some other Asian country. Um, it's got a very loud one, this he, one He's really excited about it and he's, he wants to show you all, don't you Rupert? Yeah. Bet it doesn't work. Oh, that is loud, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you chump. Anyway, on the way back to Rochester we got horribly, horribly, horribly lost. And in doing so, we found <laughs> that our bikes weren't working and that we got to this um, little corrugated iron shack, you know, and uh, this, it, was, it was in this kind of sandy pit. Uh, and Ru Ru Rupert's bike stopped, and I stopped my bike, and these two big dogs came out. They looked like Rottweilers or something. And they started barking at us, and then they started chasing us. And Rupert's bike turned on the nick of time, and he drove off, and mine wouldn't turn on. Right, it was really scary, but eventually it did turn on. I feel as though I ought to have a, a transitory shot of me uh, leaving Cambodia and entering Vietnam, but I didn't. I didn't actually capture one when the event occurred. So I hope you'll you'll let me use a shot of um, motorbike traffic. So I'm in Vietnam, I'm out in my pyjamas. I did strain quite hard yesterday to try and find a photograph of a hammer and sickle flag in the foreground and a shopping centre in the background to make some <laughs> half assed political comment about Vietnam, but I've not been able to find one. <laughs> maybe, maybe Vietnam's cleverer than that. One of the products of bad planning and of me losing my passport, which I couldn't have known. <laughs> I could have, I just did any research is that uh, it's very difficult to get up to Heilong Bay as quickly as I'd anticipated. I, I need to be... I'm flying home on the 17th. Remember that date, ladies. Today is the 9th. I'm, I'm talking on the 9th. I, don't, I, I will upload this tonight because uh, I'll need to make the blind, godless end of all things part two tomorrow, uh, where it actually... That it'll, it'll be the apocalypse. So this is like the foreboding section beforehand. This is... Nicholas Cage is still doing his ordinary job as a university professor or something like that at, at this stage and then the apocalypse is going to come tomorrow morning at 7.30 uh, where he'll make a beeline for his love interest in a collapsing world and in doing so we'll save, save it entirely. As it turns out, the end of the world is going to come in the form of four consecutive eight-hour bus journeys about two hours apart starting tomorrow at 7.30. Yeah!